Hi, I'm just going to show you a quick tutorial on setting up the PlayStation Portable using RetroArch for Android. I'm using a NVIDIA Shield TV box, um, but most Android devices should be pretty much the same. And I'm also going to show you how to set it, uh, set it to launch through Hyperspin also. Also, I've made a, a PSP bezel and I've got a configuration file as well. So I'll, I'll upload that and I'll show you how to set it up. So without further ado, let's get cracking on. So I'm just gonna go to RetroArch. I'm just gonna go through it as if it's the first time I've done it. There is a standalone emulator of this, a double P, double, uh, double P, double S, double, P. There's the gold version. I've got the free version as well on here somewhere. I think I'm just going to use the core in VirtualArch. I can't find the other one. So let's have a look. Where's VirtualArch gone? There we go. All right. So you're just going to go down to uh, online update. You should know you know this how to do this by now. If you watched some of my early videos. So online update or core update or and I was going to click on the double P double S double P core. There we go. I'm just going to click on that, let it download, and that's pretty much it. So we're just going to try and start it now. So we're going to load content. So I'm just going to go to wherever, just go to wherever your ROMs are stored. I'm going to click, click uh, select file and detect core. I'm just going to go to the fourth slot here. Go to my external hard drive and my ROMs. Where? There they are. ROMs. I'm just going to use Street Fighter because I know that definitely works pretty bang on, like so. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click the PSP double P double S double P core and Hopefully, there we go. As you can see, it started. I've got the overlay on. I'm going to turn the overlay off in a minute. Show how to do that, but it's two secs. I'll just get this going. Um, I'll just show you the quick demo just to show you it's, it's pretty rapid. Like, it's just no, he's nowhere. Slow down in it whatsoever. So I've got uh, my original PSP still. What I imported from Japan, like literally as soon as they came out. So I spent about six months with no games because there's no games over here in the UK at the time. So until like I had Metal Gear uh, Solid Acid was the only game that was the game I got with it. See, it runs perfectly fine. Like, I'm not messing about with the settings whatsoever here at all. So, as you can see, the picture's pretty clear. It runs at full speed. Obviously, you're gonna get certain games that can have bugs and stuff, but I can say I've not had that many PFP games anyway, so. Not really a big deal for me, I'll just play it on a PSP generally anyway, so. Right, so now I'll just show you a few how to install the overlay and we'll obviously remove this overlay. So first of all, we're gonna go to the menu. I'm gonna go to settings and on-screen overlay. So we wanted to get rid of that uh, overlay, what's already on there, the retro pad. Just click that to off. Go back, back, up to quick menu, resume content, as you can see, the overlay is now gone. Now we're going to make the screen bigger, if, that, if that's what you want, like, it, it should be a set preset to a uh, core provider, I think. Let's go to video, so all I've done is backed out of there, backed out of there, gone down to settings. Going to video, 
and aspect ratio is on custom at the moment so we change that to 16 by 9 and try that now Just back out back out go to quick menu resume content See, it's still pretty professional player like. Probably one of the best, better Street Fighter 2 ports as well, to be honest, I think, anyway. Well, Street Fighter 3, sorry. But. Right, now I'm going to show you how to do the, put a bezel onto it. So, I got all I did was get a HD image off the internet, turn it into a PNG, and cut the screen out. So I'm just gonna put that on now. So we're gonna go to down to back out there, down to settings again. We're gonna go to on screen overlay. I'm gonna click it to on, and then we're gonna go overlay preset. We're gonna click on that. I'm just gonna go to my I Folder where I've got my overlays in, which is in my external storage. Storage, and then I'm just going to go to PSP, and I'm just going to go back to Quick Menu, and then I'm going to resume content. And then, as you can see, it's got a nice PSP on the screen, but obviously it's covering half the screen. So what we're going to do now is going to back out again. Obviously, you have to keep doing this. I'm just showing you what I've, what I'm doing as I'm doing it and what how it affects the actual game. I'm just going to back out of here. I'm going to go to settings again. I'm going to go to video, and I'm going to go to custom. Find it. Call provided. Custom. There we go. And the first setting is going to be 430. Change this to 430. If you've seen my retro arts setup video, you'll you'll already know how to uh, adjust the screen as I'm doing now. And these settings are just purely for my bezel that I've set on here. So you got to make your own bezels. That's up to you, like. Uh, next number is 300. Once you've done this once, you should, shouldn't have to do it again. If you preset it like and you save your configuration. So. It does take a bit of time this. And the next number is 1066, the Battle of Hastings. If you are going to make your own uh, custom bezels and things, it's just trial and error, just trying to get the screen in between the hole you've cut out into it. Probably take about 20 minutes to half an hour just to keep adjusting your settings until you get it perfect. Ten sixty-six, and the last number we want is four eighty. Like I've said before, I'm, I'm a massive fan of like trying to keep it as close to the original as I can, to be honest. It doesn't really bother me that I'm playing it on a smaller screen, because when I'm playing it on my genuine, my original PSP, like it's, it's a small screen anyway, like so.
what what uh, play it on a big screen I can just play it on one of the other devices it's been ported to so I think this this looks pretty trick though when it, you'll as you'll see in a second four eight uh, Nearly there, and there we go. Now we're just going to back out of here now, and just make sure that's you can switch that on on screen overlay. Yeah, that's on. Now we're just going to go to quick menu and resume content, and there we go. How good does that look? It's a play to show you it playing on it. Like I said, it's still miles bigger than a, a, an original PSP screen anyway, like so. Like I say, you know, if you if you do want to play on a bigger screen, I'll show you now. You can actually make the um, overlay I've made bigger by just go back out of here and then we'll go to settings again. I'll go to the on screen overlay. On the overlay scale here, where it says 1.00, you can just adjust that to whatever you want it to. We'll just change it to 25 just to show you. Back out of there, back out of there. That's quick menu, zoom content. As you can see, it's maybe bigger now. So you can you can make pretty much make it as big as you want, basically, or just that not have it on the side. It's completely up to you. So the, leave, the reason I leave the opacity as it is as well. Um, let me just go to there again. Let me just go back. Settings and on screen overlay. I'll just make it slightly smaller just to show you. I'll leave the opacity at 0 0.70 instead of like completely um, 1.00. I'll just show you now. Reason is when you when you if you make your own custom bezels, it's a pain in the ass if you um, if you make it solid because you can't see where it touches the edge. But now if I show you now, I'll go back onto it. You'll see you'll see the overlap in the screen. You can see, so it just shows you where to adjust it to when you're just making your own bezels and stuff. So I just leave the opacity out because once you get your screen bang on anyway, the, the, black, the black background sorts that out anyway, so it doesn't make it look um, clear. So I'll just go back and sort that back out again. Um, go to settings. And on screen overlay, I'm just gonna put oh, on button on screen overlay back to one point double zero. And there we go. Quick menu, new content. Go like that now. I'm just going to show you the settings for hyperspin now. So you get to launch your hyperspin. Go back out of here. Get that to launch. Um, yeah, Spark Explorer. I just can go to. Pull some of these windows. Um, go to high emulators. No, hyperspin. Hyperspin settings and PSP. There we go. 
as per the lines you're worried about are the exe equals line which is com.retroarch forward slash com.retroarch.browser dot retroactivity dot retroactivity future with a capital R A N N F. The ROM extensions I put every ROM extension that uh, this code will take. I think uh, generally uh, the generally in ISO uh, format anyway. And then your parameters equals cause forward slash double p double s double p underscore libretro underscore android dot so so we're going to try that out now um i can't be what's a hyperspin and then go to psp again now because we We've, we've done all the settings in RetroArch, launching it from straight from RetroArch because because we launched it from Hyperspin, it has a different set of settings. So everything that we've just done, we're just going to have to do again quickly. Let these settings stick. So let's go settings. I'm going to go to on-screen overlay. I'm going to go on PSP. Yep. And then I'm going to go to video. I'm going to do it all in one go now. I'm just going to go to custom. I think this was a preset actually. There we go, custom. Again, the, the numbers beneath are 430, 300, 1066, and 480. So I'm just going to back out, back out, go to quick menu, resume content. I generally leave it about 20 seconds before we exit in now just to make sure the settings stick. So I'm just, I'll just start it up and then I'll exit out and then try it again. Alright, so we can try again now and there we go, load straight away. Any questions or anything like that, just put it into the comments. So I'm going to do, a, I think I'm going to do Neo Geo next, the AES. Uh, and I really, there's so much stuff what I show you with RetroArch, what I show you some, uh, how to use the cheats and stuff like that. So that, they'll be coming in the next couple of weeks as well, show you how to use the cheats in RetroArch. And a few other little bits and bobs that I've learned in the last uh, few weeks or months or whatever. So thanks for watching.